Hey everybody, it's Nate from Adventure in a Backpack. Today we are starting the actual installation process of, uh, of our camper van. So we've already done the sound deadening. Uh, there was a video about that a few days ago. I'll link to it. Uh, today we're actually doing the actual uh, insulation and we are choosing to use rigid foam insulation. Uh, it's a poly iso foam. Looks like this, RMAT Plus. I think it's also called RMAX. And uh, anyway, that's what we're choosing. So if you've been looking at camper van insulation, you know that there are a thousand different ways to insulate and everybody thinks everybody else's is wrong and then it's just a big mess, honestly. We've hated this whole process about uh, researching what's the best to use. So we've come up with the, uh, the theory that the best type of insulation is insulation that is installed and we're running with that. So at any rate, we're going to be doing a uh, uh, rigid foam insulation and great stuff expanding foam around the outside. So let's get to work. Okay, so we are going to be using spray adhesive to glue the insulation to the walls. And so the very first thing that I'm doing is just cleaning all of the surfaces to make sure that it sticks properly. Okay, so we need a way to hold the, uh, the rigid foam up there while the glue is drying. And so we're going to be wedging, uh, wedging the foam up to the roof uh, with just some boards. Uh, you can just pick up some two by fours or some uh, some one by twos. Honestly, it doesn't take very much. The uh, the the foam is pretty light. Uh, at any rate, I have an extra piece of uh, just just plywood that I'm going to be ripping down the. Uh, so when you, ripping, here's a, here's some terminology uh, for those who aren't in the construction world. Uh, ripping is whenever you cut a piece of wood like long way. So I'm going to be cutting it from here all the way down there. Just using a circular saw. So anyway, I'm going to get to cutting while she's cleaning and then we'll be ready to put foam up. Okay, so now that we have all of our boards cut so we can make the supports, I don't know how many we ended up making, but there were quite a few. At any rate, um, now time to cut for the panels. So we're going to, we've already got two of them uh, up, but I'm gonna show you guys as you're, we want you to think we're starting from scratch. We had to have a test run to make sure we actually knew how to do this. Anyway, so we're just gonna be taking measurements. So, taking a measurement from basically one side to the other. We're gonna call that one 54 and a half. Stephanie's gonna remember all these numbers. 54 and a half by uh, 13 and 3 quarter. 13 and 3 quarter. Should be 13 and 3 quarter. You remember the first one? 54 and a half? Pretty sure it was 54 and a half. 54 and a half. 13 and 3 quarter. 54 and a half. 13 and 3 quarter. Okay. So, take our poly iso board and see. Have to be these longer ones. All right, what did we say, Steph? Fifty-four and a half. Fifty-four and a half. Fifty-four and a half there, fifty-four and a half right in that area. Okay. Then thirteen and three quarter. Mm -hmm. So we're at thirteen and three quarter. Thirteen and three quarter. Thirteen and three quarter. Straight edge. Line there. Line here. And on here. Twice cut once. Thirteen three quarter. Thirteen three quarter. 
54 and a half. 54 and a half. Okay, should be good. We're gonna take our razor. If you go with the razors, I'll uh, link to it in the blog post. It's got the big long blade on it. This makes cutting a little easier. So, it goes a little faster with her, with her help. But, yeah. Okay, so we get that cleaned off. Uh, I'll make sure it fits. A little wide. It's a little wide on the edges. I grab my knife and I'll just trim it off right here. Okay, so I trimmed a little off this side. There was a little uh, piece of metal right there. It was making it not fit. Didn't account for it in my measurements somehow. Anyway, not too big a deal. So, fits up there pretty good now. So, what we we're doing, there are these bolts here and here. We're just pushing the uh, pushing the foam up, yeah, up and just smashing it up in there. So, no big deal, no big deal on that. Okay. So now we have our, uh, our adhesive. It is 3M Super 77 adhesive. And shake. Good coating here. Smells terrible. Oh. Okay. Grab the board. Get it ready. See if I can do this without stepping in. Oh, I got it. Okay. Look at that ingenious. <laughs> okay. And then just fits up in there like so. Okay. It's gonna crack a little bit. That's fine. Okay, now take our board and put it here. Take our other board. Nate. We learned this uh, in structural collapse class <laughs> back when I was a firefighter. So, <laughs> didn't think I'd get to use this again. But, okay, there we go. And it is smashed up in there as bad as hard as it's going to get. So, that is, uh, that's the one inch piece and we're going to do another layer of half inch after that. And yeah, so basically we just have the rest of these to do. So let's get to work.
Okay, so we have got as much done as we are going to do tonight. We have got a one inch layer of rigid foam up and then we put on top of that another half inch of rigid foam. It's all wedged up there, uh, put on with the 3M spray adhesive. And uh, whenever we took these down to put the second layers up, it was actually holding oh, okay, I think, um, so far. So anyway, so the next step is going to be we're going to seal up these cracks right here with uh, great stuff um, expanding foam. Uh, so this is a one-time use can, so you, we need to use the entire thing right now. So this is the gaps and cracks. It's kind of the mid-size. It says for gaps up to one inch. Uh, so it's apparently just like a one-use kind of thing, and okay, I've honestly never used this stuff before, so this is kind of new to me. At any rate, uh, we're going to fill out these cracks along the sides. The cracks are pretty small anyway. Uh, we're doing really light coats. Um, that's what our, what our goal is. This is a one-use, uh, one-time use can. It'll uh, dry up in the straw, and so after that, we're going to do super light coats inside of these ribs to try to fill it up. But super light is the key word uh, because we want it to dry. So anyway, let's see if I can figure out how to work this. All right, starting at the front. Okay, so we let the um, insulation panels on the ceiling cure overnight with the supports um, holding them up. And now we've removed the supports and Nate is um, trimming off the excess of the expanding foam insulation. He's just using a, um, just a hacksaw blade, um, just the blade itself. I'm just sawing that right off. The other day we finished up uh, half of the roof with our insulation and uh, we went ahead and did the spray foam and insulation all that kind of stuff. We're now starting day kind of three. Uh, day two is not really a uh, very long day. But anyway, um, the yesterday we spent uh, we spent most of the day cutting out more sheets of, uh, of, of rigid foam to put up. Uh, so something we have learned is the expanding foam uh, it goes a long way, honestly, and we you have to use it all at one time. Uh, you have to use it all at one time because it will harden in the uh, in the tube and then renders it uh, trash, basically, if you don't use it all at the one time. So we didn't want to do the other half of the roof and then have to spend a whole um, whole can of foam on that. So anyway, we cut out a bunch of uh, a bunch of the uh, rigid foam and we got enough for the rest of the roof and most of the large side panels. So we are going to start installing those. So let's get to work. Okay, so you know all those spy movies where there's a like some super superhuman spy guy going through uh, going through the lasers in a hallway. So this is totally what we have made for Stephanie at a, at this point. Check it out. Oh. Oh, you touched the laser. <laughs> Nicely done. Okay, so this insulation, uh, the spray insulation, pretty much gets everywhere. Um, just be careful, wear gloves. I didn't wear gloves the first day, but just some uh, some latex dishwashing gloves or something with a high high wrist. So I I got it on my face. I got it on my <laughs> I got it on my nose. <laughs> so and Stephanie's <laughs> laughing at me now. So here's a tip: let it dry <laughs> because if you don't let it dry and you try to wipe it off it just smears it around and then you just have smeared goo and sticky all over your face oh sorry 
Um, but anyway, yeah, let it dry and then it just comes off in one like solid piece. So anyway, there's your, there's a pro tip. Okay, so for all the big pieces, we've been obviously bracing them up like crazy. Uh, we've already talked about that, but Stephanie will kind of follow me around this way. Um, so the doors, we weren't really sure exactly how we were going to do it. So a little ingenuity here, uh, basically came up with a pretty, pretty good way to uh, get these uh, braced up so that they'll dry whenever I get the expanding foam. So basically just ratchet strap around the door and then a board here, brace, brace, and called it good and it is not moving. So there you go. If you're struggling with trying to find out how to brace up the insulation on the back side of your door, there you go. So we've seen in a lot of people's different tutorials and stuff that's used this uh, this expanding foam insulation that they uh, they think it's so messy and I mean it, it is messy it can be just be careful but seen a lot of people that were like oh it started dripping and so I started like wiping it up and it was just all over the place it was a mess and this, it, it, here's a pro tip for you if it drips let it dry just like I was saying if it gets on your skin let it dry same thing had a few drips right here so for the most part they just like they just come off. And then you could take, I mean, I'm probably not even gonna clean it up any more than that. Same thing here, it's good to go. Same thing there, fingernail will take that off. That's good to go, fingernail takes it off. So there you go. If I would have tried to clean that up while it was still wet, it would have just smeared all over the place and then I had a, a mess that wouldn't have just popped off like that. So there you go, pro tip. Another pro tip here is where a Wear some clothing that you don't mind ruining because <laughs> yeah. that is insulation on that, Nathan's shirt. And that, won't come and that off. is not going to come off. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to use the old flooring from the Sprinter to make the template for the insulation for the flooring. So basically, what I'm going to do is since this is too big for one whole sheet, I'm going to split it in half um, just with a line, not physically split it in half. So I'm going to draw a line down the center of it, line up the one sheet of um, insulation with the center line and mark it that way. So I'll lay the, lay the flooring on top of the insulation, draw out the template, and then cut it that way. And then do the same thing on the, on the opposite side. That way the seam is directly in the middle of the, the uh, floor on the sprinter. Okay, so we were just talking about insulation for the floor. And what we decided to do is a half inch of rigid in insulation and then um, a half inch piece of plywood on, on top of that. So that's just our subfloor. Um, all we're doing for insulation is a half inch of rigid foam. Um, Nate just asked me if he thought, if, or if I thought it was gonna go overboard if we filled in all of these little um, strips in the floor with insulation. And I said, yes, and that, I feel like that is going overboard. And the reason that I think that's going overboard is that the floor is not where you're gonna lose a lot of heat or anything like that. So, to demonstrate that, I had him come over here, put your hand on the floor. It's it's warm out today. I don't know what the temperature is today, but the sun has been shining directly on the van all day. Um, put my hand on the floor and it's cool. The, the floor is cool. The wall right here where it is not insulated is pretty warm. The wall here where it is insulated is cool. So where it's insulated um, an inch and a half is about as cool as this bare metal right here. So I don't feel like the floor is worth spending an extra couple of hours um, filling in all of those gaps. So that's just my two cents.
So we have finally finished out the, uh, the ins pretty much finished out the insulation uh, process of our van. So this was a very long process. Uh, it took us the better part of what, probably like four or five days to do this, you know, working a few hours every night. One day we worked maybe like 12 or 14 hours, but anyway, it was a long process and I think we overkilled it uh, about in our typical fashion. So anyway, uh, the only thing left to do is, uh, is go through and knife these off. Uh, we're about to start on something else, so I wanted to go ahead and close out the uh, this this vlog and uh, say, yeah, that's that's the only thing left to do. We've got everything sealed up tight. Uh, it looks pretty good, and you won't be able to tell from the video, but it sounds good in here. It sounds super, like, it's not echoey, it's not resonant or anything like that. So anyway, we've been talking the entire time about, like, if we would do it this way again, and we think we would, but that's only because we uh, we haven't tried any other ways. And so, like I said at the start of the video, uh, the best kind of insulation is insulation that is installed. And I think I'm sticking with that. You know, with insulate might be a better way, but until I do it myself, I can't say. So, anyway, we are going to close that out, and that is how you install insulation into a camper van.